Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. I am Julie and today we are going to be working on some DIYs around my home. We're going to be making some stuff out of wood. We're going to be doing some thrift flips and we are going to do a piece of furniture. This is going to be a fun video. I know y'all going to love it. So let's get started on these projects. I purchased this dresser from a garage sale for $25. I really liked it because it was long and skinny and had 11 drawers. I thought it'd be perfect for my 11 year old daughter's room. The first thing I'm gonna do is take off the hardware because it's just not gonna go with the style in her room. I just want a very simple knob. So I'm gonna pull off all the hardware and the first thing I'm gonna do is drill my new hole because it'll be easy to see where exactly the center of this drawer is right now before I fill the other holes. Then I don't have to go back and figure it out later on. One. To fill in the holes, I use spackling. I filled in the two holes, I let it dry, I sanded it, and then I sprayed a sealer on it. Then I filled it again, let it dry, and sanded it again. I just wanted to make sure that you definitely would not see the holes that I am covering up. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I don't normally do furniture. So if you have any tips for me, on what you use to fill in holes or anything that I do to this piece of furniture in this video, you can go ahead and leave it in the comments below because I definitely plan on doing more furniture as I have an entire house that needs to be furnished and I love to buy stuff secondhand and upcycle it. Now we're really going to start transforming this piece using wood. I do not like the bottom of this piece. It's going to my 11 year old daughter's room. Um, she's not the cleanest person in the world, so I don't want stuff to be able to go under here. So we're going to use wood to block that off and give it a much cleaner look. So I'm just measuring and seeing what size I need to cut my wood down to. We're going to be using five millimeter underlayment. You can get this from any hardware store. It comes in eight foot by four foot sheets and it costs around $20 right now. And then you can cut it down to any size that you need. So I'm going to be putting it on the size of this piece and it actually fits perfectly in here. So using my brad nailer, I'm just going to attach it to the dresser. Now on the front of the dresser, there is a long space where there's no wood to attach it to. So I'm just going to add some extra wood just to have a little bit more support for the five millimeter underlayment because it's only five millimeters. It's not very thick. Now that I have all the wood attached to the bottom of the piece, I just wanna go in and caulk all the seams and that'll make it look much more cohesive and not like something I added on. And just this extra little detail I find makes a big difference and it does not take very long to caulk these seams. Using the same five millimeter underlayment, I want to add some panels to the side of this. These I cut about four inches wide and it's just going to transform this dresser into something less traditional and something a little bit more farmhouse, give it a little bit more character. And you will see when I sh start showing y'all things that I'm doing around the house, how doing this makes this dresser not only tie into her room, but also ties into things that I am doing around the house. It will really make this dresser seem like it was custom made for our house. I don't love doing furniture because it's just such a process. I'm much rather a quicker project, but if I'm gonna put my time into it, I'm definitely going to make sure it's beautiful and add in all these little details that really make it unique and feel like it is just perfect for the space that it is going in. On the top of the dresser, they have this mark. I'm not sure what it is, but I'm just gonna go ahead and sand down the whole top. I'm not trying to get the finish off because I'm gonna be painting it with chalk paint, so I don't need to do that, but I definitely want to make sure it's smooth. So I'm just gonna give the top a good sand down, and then I'm gonna spray a coat of sealer on it just so I don't have any bleed through issues. I'm going to be using Rust-Oleum chalk paint to paint this dresser. I'm using the color chiffon cream and linen white. I'm going to mix the two together in equal parts. I find the chiffon cream is too dark and too close to my wall color. 
and the linen white is just a little bit too bright white for me i want something a little bit warmer so i find the combination of the two of these together are just the perfect color for my home this is actually the same color that i painted my mantle and fireplace around in my dining room and i just think it looks great in my home now it is time to paint this piece and it was definitely a process i ended up doing two coats of paint on the entire piece i didn't spray this piece because at this house i just don't have a very good place to do that i've also i also would have had to get help to move the piece of furniture around and the raw wood the five millimeter underlayment at least the first coat really needs to be painted with a brush so i just decided to put it in the garage, put a podcast on, and just paint it by hand. For the top, I just got the paint on there and then tried to do nice, even strokes along the entire piece. Even though I'm gonna go back and sand this, I still want the paint to be as smooth as possible and this will create less sanding uh, later on once it's dry. Now it is time to sand 11 drawers and an entire dresser. I chose to sand it by hand because I do not like my pieces overly distressed. I wanted to really be able to control it. I wanted to just smooth out the paint and just lightly hit the edges. I knew if I used the orbital sander, it would distress it too much. And then I'd have to go back and touch up my paint and it would have just caused more work. So I just took the time to do it this way. That way I could really get it exactly the way that I wanted it. And this is another reason why I really try to make sure my paint was as smooth as possible when applying it. So this made the process of hand sanding go much faster. It was definitely a very dusty process as well, but I just used my Ryobi blower to blow off my surface. I would feel it with my hands to make sure it was smooth. I was able to get all the surfaces very, very smooth. And once a piece was done, I just brought it inside to keep it from getting any dust on it. To seal my piece, I used a Waverly varnish in a matte finish. I used this product before and I really liked it. So I decided to use it as a top coat on this piece. I would come to regret that decision. I don't know why, but after the second coat, the paint started to bubble up. It did it slightly on the drawers, but not bad, but it was really bad on the top of the piece. Very noticeable. So what I decided to do was just close the door and not look at it for a few days and hoped that it just went away. It did not. So in the end, what I did was I just lightly sanded it down and left it because it is going in my 11 year old daughter's room. She is most not likely not going to take care of it and get not nail polish or whatever on it. And I'd probably have to sand it down and fix it again anyway. So I just left it as is. It's really ended up not being that noticeable, but I don't think I'm gonna be using this top coat again. So if you have a favorite top coat, please leave it in the comments below so I can try it out because I will be doing more furniture pieces. I ordered these knobs on Amazon specifically for this dresser. They were super cheap. It was $12 for 30 of them. They do feel cheap when you are holding them, but they function great and they look great on here. They're exactly what I wanted. I just wanted something small to kind of complement the distressed details on this piece, but not something that would stick up stick out too much and I have plenty left over to be able to put on her matching nightstands that I'm going to be doing for her room. Although flipping furniture is not my favorite thing to do, I do think I am good at seeing the potential in a piece and how it can be transformed. And even with the issues I've had with this piece, I absolutely love the way it came out. It looks amazing in her room. And I think with anything else, the more I practice, the better I will get 
adoring furniture. So I'm not giving up. They there will be more furniture pieces in my future. I thrifted this light fixture for $35 and i thought it would look great in my foyer the light fixture they have in there currently i think is first of all outdated and just way too small for the space the first thing i need to do is just take off all these warning <laughs> tags because i'm going to be painting this so i don't want those tags on there and then if you are painting a light fixture you want to make sure that you put something in the sockets so they do not get paint in it so i'm just going to roll up some painters tape and stick it in there i want to go with an aged brass look on my light fixtures so i'm using the rust-oleum sunlit brass and this is going to be my base coat. So I wanna spray this on the entire piece first, and then we're gonna add more steps to it later to really get a more aged look. But I think this is the perfect base coat. It is a nice matte brass look. I ended up going hang up the light fixture on a tree because it kept sticking to the cardboard and pulling off the paint. And this worked so much better. I was able to spray the entire piece and let it thoroughly dry so it would not stick to anything. So if you're painting a light fixture, I highly recommend just hanging it up. So once I had that first layer of brass done, I wanted to add another color. I wanted to add a metallic shine to it. So I got this gold spray paint, but I'm not going to heavily spray it. I am just going to spritz it on here. So when you are creating a piece, for me, I think the more layers and the more dimension and the more colors it has, the more expensive it looks. And y'all know I love a look for less. Take something that is really cheap and make it look as expensive as possible. Here's a piece of antique brass as an example. So you see it has that matte brass look, then it has that shiny gold, and then it has the brown antiquiness to it. So next, we're adding that brown antiquing. Y'all know I love the Waverly Antiquing Wax. It's literally like magic on everything. So this is going to give it that aged look that I want and also tie it into the other pieces in my house that I am using the Waverly Antiquing Wax on. I am not going to water it down. I am simply going to brush it on and then take a napkin and wipe it off. And once you wipe it off, you're gonna have some of that antiquing wax left on there, you're gonna have some of that matte brass, and you are also gonna have some of that gold sheen. I did not film this part because it was late at night, but after the antiquing wax dried, I just wanted a little bit more shine, so I went again and just spritzed another layer of that gold paint, just to have that little bit of a reflection for the light to really pick up on the piece. The paint finish on this piece came out exactly like I wanted. I did not want a dark light fixture. I wanted something that was gonna look like a pretty piece of jewelry in the room and complement all the other decor that I am going to have going on. And I'm excited that I am going to be able to use this paint finish on the rest of my lighting fixtures. So that'll look like one cohesive collection, even though I plan on thrifting all of my light fixtures. I wanna make a custom centerpiece for my table and I want it to be fairly small. That way I can keep it out year round and it's not in the way. So I'm measuring about 27 inches away from each side of the table. That way there's plenty of room for food and drinks or whatever and this piece will not be in the way. So it ended up being about 43 inches. I am using a two by six by eight foot board that you can get from any hardware store. Then I went cut it down on my miter saw. 
For the size of the piece, I'm gonna be using that laminate flooring that I've been using on lots of projects. So I'm just going to put it on the side of my board and mark it where it needs to be cut. And I'm going to cut two of these, one for each side of the board. The only thing about working in with laminate flooring is it has this little MDF lip where it locks into place with the other pieces when you're laying it down. So I just use my table saw to cut that right off. Then I measured the pieces that I needed for the longer size and cut two of those on my miter saw as well. I want to add a decorative curve to the side pieces. So I went on my computer and created a document the exact size of the board that I was using and then created a curve with, for it. And then using my tracing paper, I'm just going to copy this curve onto my board. What I'm trying to create is kind of a combination of a tray and a dough bowl. I saw this tray online at Hobby Lobby and I really liked the curves in it, but I wanted something long and skinny for my table and shallow like a dough bowl. That way, whatever I put in here to decorate, you will easily be able to see and it's something that could stay on the, on the table and I can change it out for the season. So that's kind of the idea I have in my head for this piece. Now I'm gonna cut out the curve using my jigsaw. I'm just gonna do the curve on the longer pieces. I decided to keep the shorter pieces on the side straight. Just because they're so small, I wasn't sure it would look good with a curve. So I'm just keeping them straight and we'll see how it looks. I always try to cut as smooth as possible with my jigsaw, but if you have any wonkiness, you can usually get it out with a high grit sandpaper. So I'm just gonna sand the curve of this and make sure it is nice and smooth and pretty. Now that all the pieces are cut out, we can put our tray slash dough bowl together. I'm gonna be using my Ryobi brad nailer. I'm going to put the smaller side pieces in and then I'm going to put the longer side pieces in. This brad nailer is the best tool that I have bought in a while. I love that I can put all my projects together anywhere. I don't have to worry about an air compressor. I definitely want this piece to be white since my table is natural wood. So I'm going to be using the same chalk paint that I use on the dresser and the mantle that is in my dining room. I'm gonna put two coats of paint on here and then lightly distress it. I styled the box using faux lamb's ear and real mini pumpkins from Walmart. I think these make a very nice neutral centerpiece for fall. I love the way the box came out and I especially love the size because I'm able to have my pretty things on the table and have the table look nice, but it will not get in the way of us eating and using this table. All right, guys, what did y'all think about today's video? Y'all know I love these kind of videos because I can get stuff done around my house and I get a video filmed. So it is a win-win for me. I have got to start getting some stuff done around this house. I thought I was making good progress and then I counted and we've been in this house for five months. So <laughs> let me know if you love seeing me work on stuff around the house because I might incorporate that more into my videos because like I said, I have got to start getting more done. I want these projects done. I wanna be able to enjoy this house. So leave a comment below, let me know what was your favorite project I worked on and if you would like to see more videos like this, if you love these types of videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Y'all have a great day and I will see y'all in the next video.